Yes, so I'm back with another episode of Top 5 Mods, a series where after all these weeks, I still look at mods. So no updates about the modding situation for the PlayStation 4 and no real other Fallout 4 related news. Now you might have already noticed that I sound slightly sick, but as they say, the show must go on. So let's roll that intro. See, I managed to track down that creepy wasteland surgeon and get things rectified. So I now have my stylish haircut and my beautiful beard again. I also got an old outfit out of the closet, so man, I just look so stylish right now, I can't even believe it myself. If only I wasn't sick right now, then everything would be fine diddly dandy. Anyway, speaking of looking stylish, at number 5 we've got Institute Power Armor. Now in the vanilla game, the Institute seems to lack some proper armor. Probably because they outsource everything to Sins, but uh, what little armor they do have looks like styrofoam. Well, no longer, we now have some proper Institute Power Armor. So to get your hands on this, you'll have to go to Fort Hagen, northwest of Diamond City. Make your way on top of the roof, perform some hardcore parkour and just open up the metal crate. And all that's left to do is finding a power armor frame and you're all set. So this is some pretty interesting looking power armor, it's got a mix of white and red. It's got hoses, butt handlebars and it looks extremely uncomfortable to wear. I mean, how are you supposed to see out of that? I guess it sort of makes sense since the institute does lack uh, an industrial design department. Also, when you enter this suit, your head sort of gets squished into the headpiece. So yeah, if you're looking around for some new power armor, or you just really want to look like a walking milk vending machine, I guess this mod might be something for you. It does seem to protect you well enough though, but I wouldn't exactly say that it's very stylish. And when it comes to my outfits, I'm definitely going for style. Anyways, it's been a while since I've had a proper home. I always seem to get evicted for some reason, or there's just this fatal flaw in the house I take a look at, and it just makes it uninhabitable. I mean, the last house I took a look at had asbestos. An entire box of it, even. But I found out about this new house. Someone fixed up the coastal cottage just northwest of the Museum of Witchcraft. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's government property and that trespassing is not allowed. But I'm rebellious, so I ignore the sign. Off the left you've got a shack with a workshop and a very large crate. And then there's the main house, so at the front porch you've got a sniper rifle that's seemingly glued to the barrel. And as you enter the actual house you've got a Maxim coat on your left and an old-fashioned patriotic painting on the wall. On the right you've got a fireplace with a strange purple radio. But also, another hot glue sniper rifle, a rat stack head and unfortunately some railroad fan art. Moving on you've got a stylish kitchen dining area. Upstairs there is a display case with Preston's gear. I have no idea what that's doing there. Is Preston secretly part of the railroad? How do you get Maxon's coat? This plot is definitely thickening. Anyways, there's also a dead plant, a TV, and a desk with a Liberty Prime poster. Then another dead plant and a bed with a small Liberty Prime figurine. A pool and ball poster and another one of these strange purple radios. And finally, there's a small bathroom with a puddle of water, a cute painting of some kittens, and Dr. Mayer's genuine liquid shampoo. If you're still not satisfied though, there is also a swing out front with a teddy bear and a Nuka-Cola bottle. So overall, this is a pretty neat looking house, stylish but not too cluttered, just the way I like it. If it wasn't for all the shit on the floor, the dead plants, the real world fan art, and the fact that Preston may or may not be living here, this place would almost be perfect. But then again, I'm pretty picky when it comes to these houses. Anyways, at number 3 this week, we've got the Handmade Revolver. So to get your hands on this thing, you have to go to Walden Ponds, somewhat south of Sanctuary. Then just go into the small hut and you'll be able to find it on top of the fireplace. So this thing is pretty customizable, you can chamber it in 38, 45 or 308. You can have no barrel, a short barrel, or if you like a heftier package, you can also opt for a medium or a large barrel. You can also add a bunch of different grips with or without stocks, you can add some homemade scopes, muzzles and a suppressor, and finally, one of two different bayonets. Also, through my extensive tinkering with these pistols, I somehow turned black. I'm still not sure why that keeps happening every time. But this thing looks pretty good, it's got the DIY thing going for it, you've got some frets, some nuts, some bolts, and some big chunks of metal. So I decided to create a short, a medium, and a sniper variant, and of course also a tactical variant. It sounds pretty good and the animations fit too, it does have a rather slow fire rate, which wasn't really so much of an issue when I was being attacked by these Brahmin love. I don't know why random animals keep attacking me in large hordes for uh, some reason. But anyways, then a bunch of half-naked primal John Caleb Brapperton showed up and uh, it actually became an issue. The fire rate was just a tiny bit too slow. I still came out of victorious though because I'm really good at shooting half-naked men, but still it was a close call. 
So I definitely need something that is just a tiny bit better at crowd control. So what better than a flamer? So this week at number 2 we've got the Assault Flamer Dash, a compact endgame flamethrower, which is somewhat of a contradictory name. But anyways, to get your hands on this thing you'll first have to sacrifice about 25 Bromin to the Bromin God. You then have to perform a leap of faith off of the Pridwin. Now you might break your shins, but you'll be fine if you believe hard enough. And finally, you have to freeze Preston just a tiny amount. You just have to make sure he turns absolutely solid. But yeah, this thing right here is also pretty good at keeping your quantum cool. Anyways, after you've done all that, you then have to make your way to the very top of the fist top mountain, and 10 of these assault flamers will magically spawn at your feet. Now they do have a tendency of sliding down from there, so you're probably gonna have to jump after them. So just make sure you don't break your shins again and uh, pick one up. So this thing is somewhat customizable, you can change the nozzle to increase damage at the cost of some range. And you can also turn this thing into a cryo or a poison flamer, which doesn't really make it a flamer anymore technically. Anyway, since we got a flamer, now we have the perfect tool to defrost Preston. Well that doesn't really seem to work. Eh, I'm sure he's fine, he's probably just pretending, I mean he is a drama queen after all. Anyways, this weapon looks okay, it's got an orange tint with some dirty smudges all over it. And the fuel tank changes color depending on what you're spewing out of this thing. It looks a bit less appealing in first person and it doesn't really have any sights. Although I don't really think you'd need any sights on a flavor anyway. Anyways, the combination of cryo, fire and poison was definitely good enough to take out the horde of primal half-naked John Caleb Bradbertons that tried to beat me to death. I don't know why the inventor of Nuka-Cola really wants to kill me, or why he's dressed up like that. We may never find out. But speaking of half-naked millionaires, at number 1 this week we've got Penn's Wood Dash New Lands Quest Mod. So this is a fully voiced quest mod that takes you to an entirely new region south of Pittsburgh. To start this quest mod, you'll first have to go to the Science! Exclamation point center in Diamond City. Once you're inside, talk to Dr. Mendel. So the first thing you'll notice is that there is an actual stat check. The second thing you'll notice is that he's way too busy using that drill press to look you in the eye while he's talking to you, which is very rude. Also his drill press disappears and reappears. Anyways, he goes on about Penn's Woods, which is a place with a bunch of trees, so he wants you to go there and figure out what's up. And this will start the God of the Forest quest, where you have to find out who or what the God of the Forest is. Dr. Mendel then proceeds to teleport you straight to Penn's Woods. So this place is pretty lively and colorful, what's with all the trees, the grass and the water. It's almost peaceful too, except there's still some inhabitants that want to kill each other. So those inhabitants include pit slavers, super mutants and ghouls. After wandering around for a bit, you'll actually come across some slavers and super mutants fighting it out. So kill them, then barbecue the squad of hostile bromin in the pen. Then proceed to move up to the super mutants camp. Now they actually have a half decent super mutant architect there, it does not look like complete trash. But you move up to the super mutant chief, who is Chief Ford, and you talk to him. Now he tells you that the slavers aren't exactly kind to the super mutants, and he asks you to kill their leader. So after he stops talking to you, you casually make your way into his shack, and you steal his collection of gold bars when he's looking the other way. Yeah, I'm slowly replenishing my funds here. You then make your way across the bridge to the slaver's camp, which is literally within shooting range of the super mutants camp. Anyways, you talk to Sinclair, who is the slaver's leader, and he'll tell you that the slavers are trying to fix the crap issue in the pit. He then proceeds to ask you whether or not you can take out the super mutant chief, but more importantly, he tells you where to go next to find the god of the forest. So you turn back around, you go a bit uphill, you tow some bears, go a bit more uphill and you'll find a shack. Then you discover that the source of all these plants and trees is a pink flamingo, or rather the protecton right next to it. So you then go into the basement, pick up some watermelons and pick up the seed canisters. Now apparently there was this doctor living here that made all these plants and the seeds and this entire system but he suffers from crippling depression. Anyways the point is that you can now go back to the robot and she'll tell you that you've done a very good job. And you can then decide who to give the seeds to. You can also decide to travel back to the Commonwealth using the teleportation hatch attached to the motorcycle parked out front. And then went back to Dr. Mendel to give him the seeds but he was still way too busy using that drill press to look me in the eye when he was speaking to me. What a rude fucking guy. But overall, a pretty cool quest mod, the voice acting is very good. I've heard rumors of a place far southwest of here. Have you come seeking the god of the forest? Hey, that's a good ear you got. They like trying to kill us. Lucky for us, they ran out of missiles and sniper rounds. The area is definitely vibrant and it has some really nice spot, but overall the landscaping could use a bit of work. Just a tiny bit of work, it looks like somebody went well with a bulldozer. There's also some floating grass and a floating tree, and the quests seem to be rather short. 
I mean, I talked to about three people and uh, I was pretty much done. I mean, I like being home in time for dinner, but uh, I feel like it needs some extra spice. But overall, still a very solid mod in my books. Well, that was it for the top 5, but as always, we've also got some bonus mods, actually at the end this week. So first up, we've got the Gypsy Danger Power Armor, some Jaeger armor imported straight from this other universe. So to get your hands on this suit, you have to go just northeast of Sanctuary, somebody just left it by the water for you to find. So this is some funky blue power armor, in the suitcase in front of it you're supposed to be able to find a GD6 chainsword as well, I couldn't for whatever reason. Anyways, I then stumbled upon this raider that was doing some target practice and uh, he made some empty shreds. You're dead. But overall the armor seemed to fare pretty well under stress and the sword was good enough to take out a fair amount of John Caleb Brappertons. But I'm still looking around for a new human companion. David is still missing and June isn't really too bright. So I found out about this new female companion right next to Covenant. But when I arrived there, I realized I still had some unfinished business I had to take care of first. Anyways, I then proceeded to walk up to Molly and uh, talk to her to get to know her. Who are you? Molly, at your service, sir. You interested in traveling together? Oh yeah, let's get moving! Gotta say, I'd feel more comfortable holding a pair of pom-poms. Okay, I think I've heard quite enough. Let me just, uh... Right, much better. Then I just had to make sure there were no witnesses. Anyways, that was it for this week's match. Yet again, some very solid maths in there. Will I ever find the perfect companion? Will I be able to defrost Preston? And more importantly, do I want to? And will I ever get rid of this cold? Find out potentially next week. So, until then. So yeah, overall, I have to say my voice sounds really good right now. It's like slightly deeper though, so that's pretty cool, I guess. But yeah, I hope to get rid of this cold in uh, a week. There was this chick in my computer science class. Uh, now she decided to sit right next to me for whatever reason. And uh, she then proceeded to not talk to me. Sit on her phone for the entire class. But the worst thing here is that she was coughing the entire time. So I'm pretty sure that's where I got it from. So maybe she just sat right next to me just to infect me. That's my running theory. So uh, yeah, thanks. Anyways, that's for the IRL updates, that 2k California thing ended up not going through. I guess it was probably like a miscommunication between 2k and the marketing firm I was in contact with. I mean, the first question I asked was whether or not they actually wanted to fly out a European there. And the answer to that was yes, but uh, apparently they couldn't find a flight for me. Although it was a very close one, so I don't know. I got like an alternate offer of going to the UK studios on a 26th. Although I haven't heard anything back from that, so I'm not really expecting that to go through. So maybe I won't end up playing Mafia 3 before release anyway. Which I honestly don't really care about too much, because uh, I wasn't planning on buying that game anyway. But don't tell them that, because uh, you know, I would like a free trip, that's, that's pretty cool. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking here, because I would like to save my voice. I don't want to be completely mute. So uh, I'll see you next week, when hopefully I haven't died due to this cold. So until then...